Oh, Mum, do we have to have these foul crispers? Now what's wrong with them? I'd like to know where you'd all be without Campbell's. Your mother packed for Campbell's, we were married from Campbell's, you were all brought up on Campbell's, so Campbell's you'll have, and like it. Why don't you eat them, then? Well, that's different. I ate them for 25 years. They're bodybuilding, see? I'm built. Oh, what a smashing red coat. Whose is it? Princesses for the wedding. Betty. Oh, look, Mum, isn't it lovely? I wouldn't mind getting married if I got presents like that. Susan, to hear you talk, you think marriage was only a matter of getting presents. Well, isn't it? I always thought that was the idea. Do you think your father and I got married just to get presents? We got three beauties, even if we didn't expect them. Now, Joe, that'll do. And when you finish with my paper, perhaps you let me have a look at the news. Oh, sorry, Dad. Oh, if there's one thing I'd like to see, it's that wedding. Well, there's nothing to stop you. By the way, they've written to say they're going to fix the telephone this morning. Joe, I told you I didn't want the wretched thing. Well, Mr. Campbell insisted. Now I'm worked for me, he says it's absolutely necessary. I know it'll lead to trouble. I haven't forgotten what happened to my brother, Sid. Oh, well, what? Apart from going to jail. The telephone was his downfall and made life too easy for him. He didn't have to go to work to bet. There it was on the end of a tube. <laughs> Your mum, don't be silly. It'll be wonderful. Think of the hours we'll save tramping down to that box on the corner. Now, listen to me, all of you. That telephone's for me and you kids keep off it. Better tell him to put it in the workshop, Mother. Oh, don't oh, you can't. Can't. Well, if it's out there, I shan't use it at all. That's the idea. Nasty things, always going off when you least expect them. <laughs> you talk as though they were dynamite. Well, I can remember when they rang up Sid and told him he'd won some money on the dogs. The shock upset him so much that every time the phone rang after that, he barked like a dog. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Hello, there she blows. I'm off, Mother. Mother. And don't forget that telephone goes in my workshop. All right. Bye, Mum. Don't take any notice of Dad. I have it in the front room. No one ever goes in there. It'll be private. All right. Hey, Dad, give us a lift to the library. Have to hurry. I'm late already. Now, Mum, you have it in the hall. It'll be much more convenient. Oh, all right. Now, bye-bye. Don't you take any notice, Mum. You have it where you like. All oh, right. Now, don't rush or you'll get indigestion. Puss, puss. Come on. Puss, puss. Come on. Oh, you silly little thing. Sue. Hello. Hello. Let me carry that. It's all right, thanks. I say, what happened to you last night? I waited for over an hour. I told you it was doubtful, Peter. Yes, but you I said... I told you I'd come if I could. Well, I couldn't. Well, what about tonight? Oh, I'm not sure. I know. Give me a ring about seven. Oh, good. But you're not on the phone. You shall be by then. Post office telephone. Oh, gave me quite a turn. Can we come in? Oh, yes, I suppose so. Where do you want the instrument fixed, madam? Instrument? Oh, I suppose you mean the phone. That's right, lady. Where do you want it? Well, if I had my way, I wouldn't have it at all. I can't bear the things. But where would you like it, madam? I suppose if I have to have it, it might as well be the kitchen. Be handy there. OK, lady. Lead away. Get a lot of steam in here, don't you? Oh, only when I'm cooking. Shouldn't have it in here, lady. I have to make a lot of holes. Oh, what sort of holes? What uh, sort of holes, Bert? Round ones. Oh, make a lot of mess, will it? Can't have holes without mess, lady. Oh, well, perhaps better be in the front room. My daughter wanted it there. She's in Boots Library, you know. Well, she ought to know, then. Won't do. Wrong side of the house. Oh, what a pity. I mean a double lot of holes, lady. You wouldn't want that, would you? No. Well, better be the workshop, then. My husband wanted it there. Morning, sir. Oh, morning, Huggy. That reminds me. I've got something to show you. Take a look at these, Will. Not bad wrappers by the look of them, eh? Might be, sir. Can't really tell till we've had a chance of testing them. Yes, we'll have a hunch they'll save us a bit of time and money. Anyway, give them the once-over, will you? 
Right you are, Mr. Campbell. Good morning, Mrs. Haggard. How's Mr. Fisher? Oh, much better since he stopped reading the papers. Uh, I say. You heard about Mrs. Bristow? No, what? They better cut her open again. Oh, poor thing. Last time she came home, her stomach was like fancy work. Well, you know what these surgeons are. Can't resist the knife. I should have thought they took out everything there was to take. What is it this time? Well, from what the milkman was telling me, it's her... Uh... <clears throat> madam. Is this the place, madam? Yes. Mr. Ruggett's always up to something in here. He's very handy with his tools. What about it, Bert? I don't know. Well, you won't want any holes out here, will you? No. Well, then. No good. Take too much cable. Yes, I'm afraid it'll have to be in the house, madam. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Hinchley. Oh, please don't call me Mr. Makes me feel a hundred. What shall I call you then? Oh, Hinchley or Harold. Anything but Mr. I'd like one of these, please. Hmm? I'm afraid you can't have any of these. They're all out at the moment. Oh. Well, in that case, I'd better have Freud's studies in the psychology of sex. Freud's studies in the psychology of sex? By the way, uh, are you interested in a sex, Miss Haggard? What? Uh, purely as a study, of course. Well, I, I don't know, really. I haven't really thought about it much. Oh, you should, you know. Everyone should. It's because they don't that our lives are so full of tragedy and misunderstanding. Really? Oh, yes. And it's a, a fascinating study. You're just at the right age to appreciate it, Miss Huggett. Am I? Yes. I've been watching you for some months now. You have an unusual nature, Jane. Uh, may I call you Jane? <laughs> yes, if... If you like. One, two, three, four, Mary at the cottage door. Five, six, seven, eight, Mary at the cottage gate. Is he all right? He's testing. January, February, March, April, May, June. Once upon a time when a bird's ate lime and a monkey's chewed tobacco. My old man's an airman. He told me his old man was in the police force. OK, Joe, ring off. Here we are. All okie doke, lady. Thanks for the cuppa. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, lady. Good afternoon. Come back! It's gone off! Hello, is that Strutham 1210? Hello? Strutham 1210. One, two, three, four. Mary at the cottage door. January, February, March, April, May. My old man's an airman. Hello, Mother. Hello, dear. They put the telephone in? Yes, in the hall. In the hall? But I thought I said about that. I couldn't help it. They didn't have enough holes or something. Nobody does anything, I ask them round here. OK, then Thursday. Oh, no, wait, I can't have a date with a naval type on Thursday. Now, come make on, Sue. Oh, why not? Well, then make it Saturday, then. Oh, I can't hear. Someone keeps interrupting. What? Mm-hmm. Now, listen, who was that phone put in for? Me or that girl? Dad, what a fuss to make about nothing. Fuss about nothing? I've got to ring up Bill Adams to fix up a game of snooker, and what happens? Well, if that's all, you can wait, can't I've waited you? 20 years to have a phone call in my own house. I'm hanging if I'm going to wait any longer. Oh, Joe, Look, here's a letter from Cousin Edie. She's got to go into hospital tomorrow to have an operation. Not on her mouth, by any chance? No, her stomach. She wants me to take care of little Di while she's away. Oh, does she? Well, I've got to do something to help. But you're always doing something to help. It's time you grew out of it. You're forever worrying about other people. Getting their rations, queuing and cooking for them. Look what happened when he helped Uncle Joe. Sat him so near the stove, his wooden leg caught fire. Oh, well. Anyway, she can't leave the poor child all on her own. Why not? Edie happens to be my cousin. Yeah, ten times removed. I don't care. I've got to have the poor little thing till Edie's better. All right, you do whatever you like, love. I give up. Did you want the phone, Dad?
are you making that up for? You, dear. What? Oh, you know it's got a broken spring that sticks in my back and gives me nightmares. Why me? I told you. Poor little Di's gonna be here any minute. You can't expect her to sleep down here in a strange house. No, I won't sleep a wink. Probably failing my exams. It'll be all your fault. Now, I don't want any nonsense from you. Bad enough having your dad to deal with. Oh, there she is, poor little mite. Hello, Auntie. Hello, dear. Could you possibly help me out? I haven't got enough money to pay the taxi I run clean out. Well, yes, of course. Where did I put my bag? All right, Mum. I'll fix it. Well, come in, ducks. Oh, Tom, what's up? Let's have your bag. Now, what's going on out here? It's Diana Jo. She's just arrived. Hello, Uncle. How's yourself? Mostly, thanks. Why, you've got to be a big girl, haven't you? Have I? Hello. Well, bigger than I expected. Well, perhaps you'd like a nice cup of tea after your journey. You're dead right, I would. How's your mother, love? Terrible. Shouldn't be surprised if she pegged out. Isn't she coming down to breakfast? No, she doesn't feel very well. Looks healthy enough to me. She was in the bathroom for hours. And I'm going to miss my train. What about her job? She hasn't got one. Hasn't she? Why not? She's looking round for something, she says. How? Out of the bedroom window? She's very delicate. I remember Edie saying so. Delicate, my foot. She looks as strong as a horse. There's no need to carry on just because I'm trying to give Edie a helping hand. If you ask me, it's Diana who needs a helping hand in the proper place. And I'd like to do it. You'll do no such thing, Joe Huggett. I promised Edie I'd take her in. And she's taking you in more like it. She's a bit more developed than I expected, I admit. Developed? She's overexposed. Anyway, I've given my promise, so that's that. Blimey, what a future to look forward to. I bet a cup oh. of tea, Di. Oh, thanks. Did you sugar it? No, ducks. Shall I fetch you some? Oh, no, I'll go without. The last thing I want is for you to wait on me, Auntie. Good girl. Well, time's getting on, ducks. Nearly lunchtime. How about a bite to eat? Well, if you've got any liver. Liver? Yes. The doctor says I'm anemic. I need blood. Well, I never. Take after Edie, I suppose. That's right. Dr. Parker said I was real bloodthirsty. So I must have it. But suppose I can't get it? Well, anything might happen. Ooh. me. It's Jim. I've had a telegram. He's not dead. No, he's coming home next week. What's wrong with that? Everything. Oh, I see. You mean he doesn't want to marry you? Oh, but he does. That's just the trouble. He wants me to get a special license and marry him straight away. And I'm not sure that I want to. Well, I shouldn't worry. Perhaps when he sees you, he won't want you. Everyone says you look years older since you've done your hair like that. And look at the life you've led. You've been to the pictures with Alec Harley at least three times, to my knowledge. What about the man, oh, Mr. Dragget, who asked you to tea to see his geraniums? Don't be ridiculous. I can't understand you grown-ups. If you don't like each other, why get married at all? Hello, Meg. Hello, ducks. <laughs> Blimey, you've gone all raw wedding on me. Oh, don't be soppy. Can you see me wearing a thing like that? Yes, if I let my imagination run wild. Whose is it? Diana's. Hey? Now, what are you ironing her muck for? It's about time you'd finish for the night, isn't it? She's feeling rotten. What does she expect she stays up half the night? Where is she? Upstairs, I think. Give me that.
Come in. Did you want me? Yes, I did. In future, all the time you're in my house, you're on your own smalls, you understand? It's okay by me. They don't take long, Uncle. And don't call me Uncle. Otherwise, I might forget myself and behave as though I was. What are you looking at? Nothing. Well, you needn't keep on about it. Can't last much longer. That's what you said when the war broke out. That went on for six years. She's only been here a week. That's eight days too long for me. Oh, yeah? What do you mean, oh, yeah? Nothing. Well, Mum, we are going to the royal wedding, aren't we? Why, dear? Well, I've got the day off from school. Well, it depends if your father can get away. Well, I expect I can fiddle it. It's a long time since I went to the dentist. Of course, if we do go, we shall have to take Grandma. Oh, cripes, that's torn it. Pet, how often have I told you not to use that language? What language? That's torn it. What an expression. Well, what would you say, then? Well, what a nuisance. What a nuisance. Do you think that expresses one half what I think? You're late, you two. We met Peter. He's had a wife from two and he's going to be best man. Oh, that'll be nice. Oh, by the way, dear, Mrs. Fisher wants to know what you'd like for a wedding present. How does she know anything about it? Well, we were talking and you know how it is. No, I don't know how it is. Now, Janie, that's your mother you're talking to. Well, it's a bit thick. She promised not to say anything about it and now it'll be all over the town. I'm not married yet, and I'll please myself when I do, and, and you can all of you mind your own business. That's torn it. Well, well, that's torn it. the most awful news. Simply awful. Not your mother? No. Me! It's from the Labour Exchange. You want to know why I haven't registered in my age group? Well, why didn't you? Oh, I forgot. Aunt Ethel, do you think they'll direct me? Oh, I shouldn't be surprised. But that's awful. They might make me do something terrible. Some dirty work. Well, it's the same for everybody. Work or want, save or sink. <laughs> oh, never mind, Di. I'll think of something. You will? I'll try, anyway. Oh, thank you, Auntie. You're a pet. Oh, there's Alec. I'll have to go. Don't be late. All right, bye. Where's your father? In the workshop, I think. Oh. Joe? Hello. Joe? Yeah? Look, I've been thinking. Uh-oh, trouble. Well? You know what you said about Di getting a job? Yeah? Well, I don't think she'll ever manage it on her own. You're dead right she won't. So I wondered if you could do something for her. There's only one thing I'd like to do for her, and that's send her back where she came from. What's wrong with your face? Don't be rude. Now, you listen to me. You know we can't send her back. Edie may be in hospital for months. All right. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, I thought you might get her a job at Campbell. What? Don't be silly. I think she'd take one. Yeah, a chance would be a fine thing. You see, she's frightened of being directed. Oh, so that's it, is it? Well, she'd better get herself directed somewhere else. I do think you might try and help. How do you think I feel about it? I don't know, but I know how I'd feel about it if I arrived at Campbell's with that painted, does he? I'd be frightened to show my face there. You needn't look like that either. It's out. I'm not doing it, not for you or anyone else. You understand? Here I am. You think I am, Tarzan? Here I won't take her. I won't take her. Wait out here. Okay. Well, 
Well, that's just it, sir. The men are getting a bit slack in the packing department, and I'd like to keep my eye on them, but I, I can't, as things are. Mm -hmm. Well, why not? Well, sir, I, I can't split myself in two. There's too much paperwork, that's the trouble. Well, quite hug it, I will, for greater efficiency. Uh, you can have Miss Perks lend you a hand. Oh, I, I, I wouldn't like to rob you of Miss Perks, sir. Uh, I happen to have a young person in mind. Oh? Yes, sir. <laughs> kind of acquaintance. Matter of fact, she's a, a relative of my wife's. Well, not sure we can afford to take her on any more staff just now. Still, if you like, I'll send her along sometime. I'll see her. Oh, she's outside now, if you like, sir. All right. Uh, Miss Perks, send in the young lady who's waiting, will you please? Yes, Mr. Campbell. Mr. Campbell wishes to see you immediately. Uh-huh. Mr. Campbell's the managing director. That's nice for him. This way, please. The young lady, Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Miss Perks. Yes. Uh, uh, sit down, Miss... Um, Hopkins. Uh, Ho Hopkins, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, well, Miss Hopkins, I've just heard from Mr. Huggett here that you'd like a post with us. Oh, yes, I'd love that. Uh, are you used to office routine? Oh, definitely, Mr. Campbell. The whole place stinks of her. Can't think what's come over, Mr. Huggett. One consolation, the chief will soon send her packing. Ooh. <laughs> Is this the only hanger you've got? Yes. Mm. Looks as though you'll have to get another. You see, the trouble with you is you've been reading too many novels and seeing too many films. Life isn't like that. Isn't it? Not real life. Jack doesn't always get his Jill. Nor, nor Jane, her, her Jim, if you see what I mean. No, I'm not sure that I do, quite. Yeah. Well, now, let me explain. Here's your story. You meet a man named... You meet a man named Jim, and you fall passionately in love with him. You're certain that he's Mr. Wright, mm -hmm. so you say you'll marry him. Then the war comes, he goes away for five years, and now he's coming back. What happens? I don't know. I'll tell you. After the trials and the tribulations of the war years, you fall into each other's arms. Do we? Not in real life. Only in a novel, my dear. In real life, you're desperately anxious. Jim's a stranger to you. You've made great strides since you saw him last. You know what, Janie? No. You've grown up. Have I? Yes. How can you possibly come together again after all the, the, the new contacts you've made? Well, that's it exactly, Harold. I, I just can't remember what he looks like. Of course not. And there's another thing. You've met me. Now, that may sound a little thing to you, Jane. Oh, oh no. Oh, yes. No, Harold. Oh, yes, it may be a little thing, but what a, a vast difference it's made to your, your mental and emotional outlook. What are you going to do about it? That's the problem. I don't know. Well? Excuse me. Will you please change my book? Oh, yes, of course. What do you want? Have you got whatever, Amber? Oh, Uncle. You said you'd come and look at that window in my room. It's half off its hinges. Oh, all right, all right. Give me a chance to get my foot inside the house. Hello, love. Hello, Dad. That's the one. Oh, is it? Yeah, what's all this muck all over everything? Only a bit of gum chump. What's it doing here? I used it to keep the window shut. It was making such a row I couldn't sleep. So you gummed up the works, eh? He hasn't got a beard, has he? Because if he has, I couldn't even take an interest. <laughs> no, he's not as bad as that. Tea, dear. Oh, yes, please. please. Well, he's been married for years. Now he's got himself tangled up with an awful little blonde who's not even 20. When you say tangled up, what exactly do you mean? Oh, he's in and out of the bedroom all the time and takes her everywhere in his car. And it does seem a bit mean when Mummy... I mean, his wife has to walk down the high street and carry home her own shopping. Well, he's such a perfect cat to me. I should advise his wife to leave him. Oh, but you couldn't do that. You see, 
It's my mother. Crippin, your mother? Yes. Cool, what are you going to do? Pet, come along, ready for rehearsal. Pet, does your mother know about all this? No, if she did, it would break her heart. She's awfully simple. She doesn't know much about the world. Brought you a nice cup of tea. Oh, thanks. Shove it down there, love. Oh. What's the matter? You tired? Yes, I am a bit. Oh, I am thankful you got young Di that job. I should have passed out otherwise. Suppose you realise what it means for me, carting her to and fro every day. Ah, oh, well, it won't be so bad, really. Well, do you, you don't have to do it, love. I can hardly hear the car engine for whistles. Oh, oh Joe, I'm worried. That's nothing new. It's about Jane. She's in such a state about getting married. I don't understand it. Well, I can't think what's come over the kids these days. They never seem to know their own minds for two minutes together. Now, directly I saw you, Ethel, I said, now, there's the girl for me. You were wearing a blue blouse and a red skirt. Oh, I never. Never in my life. Yes, you did. You were cycling up Brixton Hill with your Aunt Annie. And I well remember you wore a blue blouse and a red skirt. And a pink straw hat. Oh! Then you remember something that never happened. All right, go on. Call me a liar. Well, I never had a red skirt. Red wasn't my colour. Now, that Flossie Drayton you used to go out with, she often wore red. I expect it's her you're thinking of. Well, there's a nice thing. You'll be telling me next that you never even rode a bicycle. Well, as a matter of fact, dear, I never did. Must have been that Flossie Drayton. Now the ostrich bird sticks his head in the sand Cause it can't be shake the trouble by the hand So when there's trouble around your way Just try walking backwards all the day And the tortoise too hides within its shell When it knows it's heading for a trouble spell So when there's trouble around your way Just try walking backwards all the day The ostrich bird and the tortoise too Are a bad example if they only knew For when there's trouble around your way Just walk up and meet it face to face Then put it in its proper place And stop walking backwards all the day Stop walking backwards all the day Pet, we've been thinking, if only we could get someone to make a pass at that girl and cut your father out, that might do it. What about the boy who's so keen on your sister? Oh, Peter Hawtrey? Yes. He's frightfully good looking. <laughs> I suppose I could try him. If I can get the day off, will you come to the royal wedding with me? Well, I half promised Sidney Bates yesterday. Anyway, I don't know if I'll get the day off. But you said last week that you were coming with me. Well, I can change my mind, can't I? All right. If that's the way you feel about it. Yes? Can I speak to you for a minute? Well, it's a bit it's late. It's terribly important. All right, what is it? Promise you won't tell a soul. Promise. Hope to die. Hope to die. Oh. Hello? Yeah, that'll be Father Gill for me. Shh. Who? Artie? Do you know an Artie, Jane? Is he one of yours? No. It's one of mine, as it happens. Hello? Uh-huh. Well, what do you think? One of these days, I'll tell her. I didn't catch that. Well, of course I'll go. But I can hardly believe it. Why should a girl like Diana look at your father? Shh! Some girls like men with one foot in the grave. Hmm. I tell you, I saw him in her bedroom twice. That is pretty bad. Oh, you will help me rescue him, won't you, Peter? <laughs> what on earth can I do? Well, she's bound to get tired of him soon and want someone younger. I mean, anybody would. Hmm. But by then, the damage will have been done. I thought perhaps you might cut him out. Cut him out? Yes, you're young and handsome. <laughs> Do you really think so? Of course. Hmm. Look, ask her out to a dance or something. Lead her up the garden path, you know. But I'm not sure if I could, you see. Besides, Susan wouldn't like it. That's just it. It'll make Susan terribly jealous, too. You can kill two birds with one stone. Oh, no, I don't see that. You wouldn't. Look, she's always standing you up, isn't she? Yes. Do her good if you stood her up for a change. You know, that's not a bad idea. You'll do it? I'll, um, think about it. Good old Pete. Ah, oh, there you are, Huggy. Yes, sir. About these wrappers. Looks to me as if they'll come out 30% cheaper than the ones we're using. Well, the trouble is they're pretty inflammable, sir. Well, not dangerously so, surely. 
Well, I don't know. I took a couple home yesterday and tested them. You put a cigarette in them and bobbed your uncle. They just grew up in smoke. Well, that's easily remedied. No smoking in the packing department. Well, even then, I'd be very doubtful, sir. I shouldn't order them in bulk. Ah, but it's ordering in bulk that saves the money. Besides, in a week or two, when everyone gets onto it, the price will go up. Well, it's you to say, sir, of course. I think we'll take a chance on it. Order a hundred gross straight away. You're sure you... Uh, quite sure, Huggett. Very well, sir. And I... Where's he snooped, huh? No, he's under the typewriter. Oh, you glorious, glamorous thing. I love you. Oh, put a sock in it, Percy. You make me smudge my nails. Oh, now look what you've done. I can't read a thing he put down. Oh, well, I don't suppose it matters. Oh, well, it won't have to now, will it, eh? Hey? You keep your great hot hands off me. I won't half put it across you. Remember me? Faintly, why? Are you busy? Not particularly. Would you like to come for a stroll? Well, it's not too far. But how about the witchy? Dashing, aren't we? Okay, I don't mind if I do. stand that hugget place of an evening. It simply crawls with a family. Perhaps we could get away and make a date sometime. Why not? I suppose you're dating up for the royal wedding by now. Well, practically. If I can get the day off. Oh, look, if we can make it, would you like to join up? Okay. Oh, good. I'll give you a ring. Okay. Here's fun. Oh, hooray. Oh, oh. you have another? Hey, don't rush me. I'd like to. You know, you're not a bit like I expected. I always thought you were one of those quiet types. Who, oh, me? Well, aren't you? Mmm. I think I will have another one. No, stupid, another drink. Well, I'm off. I go off to lunch. Right, uh, can I speak to you for a minute? Oh, sure, what is it? Do you think I could have Thursday off next week? Oh, raw wedding, eh? Yes, that's it. No, afraid not, Tosh. Oh, yes, but... I have to be going I myself. Could... Well, surely well I've got to leave it. someone in charge here, haven't I? Yeah. I see. Yeah, well, sorry and all that, but, uh, better luck next time, eh? <laughs> well, you going to the wedding? No good, they won't give me the day off. So they couldn't make an exception. Oh, dear. I don't suppose you'll ever have a better chance of studying mass psychology. No. Mum will be disappointed. So am I. Deeply. I wanted the whole thing brought home to you. What do you mean? Hmm. This marriage business. You see, I don't think you've really taken the whole matter seriously enough. It's a terribly important step you're contemplating. It may wreck your entire life. I have thought about it an awful lot. I just can't stop. I lie awake at nights and it goes round and round in my head. Poor little head. If only I knew Jimmy like I know you. I just can't remember what he looks like. It's just a blank where his face ought to be. Oh, Harold, it, it's horrible. Yes, it is horrible. But you know, Jane, I think it's fate. It's 
fate that's brought us together. Hello? Yes? I'll say it's me. What's cooking, chum? Of course I've got the day off. What do you think? Well, I haven't. What? Gowan won't play. Well, of all the mean so-and-so. He says he's going himself, so I've got to take charge. Well, you're not going to let him get away with that, are you? What can I do? Tell him where he gets off. I would. That wouldn't work with Gowan. Listen, Stoke. I'm not going to be stood up. And if you can't talk some sense into that Gowan, I will, see? Why, I say you wouldn't do that. Wouldn't I? Try and stop me. Is your name Gowan? Yeah, that's right. What can I do for you? Oil and grease? Reborn? Service? What's the idea of telling Peter he can't go to the royal wedding? Peter? Look here, who are you? Never mind who I am. Oh, but I do. Definitely. Won't you come in? Oh! Now, what's all this about? Why'd you have to be such a spoil sport? If you're going, why can't he? <laughs> Someone has to stay and look after the business. As I happen to be boss. Well, yes, but... What's your interest in this? Was he taking you? As a matter of fact, he was. Disappointed? What do you think? Ah, I don't see why you should suffer. How about coming with me? Is that an invite? If I knew you better, it'd be a command. Mmm. Tough boy, eh? Well, we could stay up in town afterwards and... have a spot of dinner if you felt like it. What do you say? On the level? Very course. Is it a date? I'll think about it. Oh, you don't have to go home yet, do you? Oh, yes, I do. Well, why? Well, I've got to tell Peter I couldn't persuade you, haven't I? See you in church. Oh, Jane, isn't that sweet? Is it? I wonder how they knew you were getting married at once. I suppose Jim's people must have told them. Don't throw away the paper and string. I'll probably want it to send them back. Now, don't say that when he's flown all the way over from that awful Palestine. You're over-anxious. That's what's wrong with you. I'm not over-anxious. Yes, you are. I know just how you're feeling. I remember how I felt before my wedding. And your dad only cycled over from Brixton. Whoever can that be? Hello, Grandma. Hello. Fancy seeing you. I suppose you all thought I was dead. No, of course not. Well, I might as well have been dead, for all the notice anybody ever takes of me. Oh, how are you, dear? All right. Have a cup of tea? Yes, please. What are those? Wedding presents. Well, you might at least undo them. What's the good? There's only two more lamps. That makes 15. Jane, how many times have I told you it's not the gift, it's the giving? Quite a hundred. I see. So I'm not to be shown the presents either. What do you mean, Grandma? I'm not good enough for you, I suppose. No one thought of telling me the news. I had to get it from the milkman. When he gave me my pint this morning, he said, so your granddaughter's getting married in a hurry, I hear. Imagine how I felt. It may interest you to know, Grandma, that I may not be getting married after all. So you can tell that to the milkman with my compliments. Like that, is it? Oh, well. You know what young girls are, Grandma. I know what yours are. Soppy. What's up with Janie? Oh, take no notice. She'll get over it. Over what? This wedding business. Can't say I'm surprised. Never did think much of that fella. His ears are too large. And how are you feeling, Grandma? Neglected. I really came about the royal wedding. It's about time you let me know what your plans are. You're going, Joe, aren't you? Not me. You don't catch me queuing all night. Oh, don't start that again, Father. Well, I had my share of night exercises in the home guard. Oh, well, all right. What's the drill? The Abbey's the spot to see it from, of course. Oh, no. I don't want to miss the procession. Well, the best place is the palace. But I want to see them come out arm in arm. Besides, you never get near the palace. <laughs> Who says? All our family's got sharp elbows. We get through. 
That's right. No one's going to stop me. Yeah, I'll tell you what. We'll toss for it. Edge the palace, tails the abbey. All right? Edge it is. OK, Grandma? Apt to be, I suppose. The weakest to the wall, as usual. But mark my words. You'll get all the riffraff round the palace, so don't say I never warned you. You're improperly dressed. I'm not. Yes, you are. You haven't got your Mac on. Oh, I thought my petticoat was showing. Now, is everyone carrying iron rations? Well, I got the sandwiches here, if that's what you mean. And the bread was new, so don't call it iron. All I want to know is if everyone's present and correct. Well, why can't you say so? Oh, you do muddle me so when you talk military, Joe. All the tin open. OK, I've got one on me now. Well, have not help you if it doesn't work, that's all. Now, what have you forgotten? My periscope. <laughs> Now, if anyone loses contact, remember this. Our objective is the third lamppost down the mall, where we intend to reform at 0200 hours. Oh, 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 why don't you talk English, Joe? I am talking English. English enough to win the war, anyway. I know one thing. I'm in perjury with my feet already. Fair perisher, no mistake. Oh, what I wouldn't give for our water bottle. My feet are like a fishmonger slab. If we all try to get a bit of shut-eye, Grandma, perhaps we'll forget how hard the pavement is. I know I shall sleep a wink. You all right, pet? Wish I could find a hole to stick my hip in, Mum. Keep sticking up. Oh, here's my cushion. Try that. Thanks. Won't be the first time I've slept on a ground sheet. No chum, I bet it won't. <laughs> What's that, Joe? <laughs> you wouldn't understand. The lights are nearly all off in the palace. Sure they are. Do you remember the night before our wedding, Joe? I should say so. I had such a rotten cold, I thought I'd never be able to say I will. Do you wish you never had? Not half. Straight? Well, I shouldn't have to come out in the caper like this if I was still single, now would I? I'm sorry, Joe, but I never would forgive myself if Pet didn't see it. You don't think I miss it really, do you? I remember the night before our wedding. I was up at half past three in the morning finishing my dress. I just couldn't get the sleeves to go right. Well, you looked OK to me. Did I really? Yes. When I turned and saw you coming up the aisle on your dad's arm, I felt I hadn't got any stomach left. You look so pretty. Did I really, Jack? Yes. Of course, you haven't looked the same since. Mm. And to think that any day now, Jane will be going up the aisle on your arm. It doesn't seem possible, does it? No. But ours was a good wedding. Remember your dad having a drop too much to drink? <laughs> Love. My dad? He never had a drop too much, never in his life. It was those new boots on the slippery floor. Remember how your mother cried? Yes, and young Dot came over queer and had to sit in the scullery. And old Mr. Titball having to lay down in the spare room. <laughs> <laughs> that was the real wedding, that was. <laughs> I've never had such an headache. Still, it was lovely, wasn't it? Of course, we were a couple of mugs to get married as young as what we did. Have you been happy, Ethel? Oh, go on, you know I have. Me too.
glad you came. What do you think? You glad enough to come again? I'm open to be persuaded. Okay, that's a fixture. Ah, here's the food. You know, I'm so hungry, I can eat a horse. Quite a coincidence, sir. Hello? Hello, I can't hear you. Yes, this is Stratham. Who do you want? Oh, hold the line. Jane! Yes? Telephone. All right, coming. Who is it? A man. Hello? Speaking. Who is it? Who is it? Can't you guess? No. I'll try. Harold? <laughs> Look, it's Jimmy. What? I said, who's Harold? I can't hear you. Hello, that better? Yes. I'm at the airfield, I just got in. I've only got a couple of minutes left, so we'll have to speak fast. Now listen, Janie, darling. I've got a job in Sevy Street. Oh, a job in South Africa. We'll have to leave in three weeks' time, so how about Saturday week for the wedding? Oh, no, Jimmy, that's too quick. Well, we'll have to leave on the 28th. It only leaves us a week for the honeymoon, packing and everything. But look, Jimmy, I, I'm not sure. I, I... Well, if you get a move on, you can do it. No fuss, no trimmings. Just let's get hitched as soon as we can, eh, darling? Set up to the back seat with all this hanging around, aren't you? I, I don't know what to say. Well, then don't say it. You never could make up your mind, so I'll make it up for you. It's a date, Saturday week. Orange blossoms and wedding bells. Oh, there she blows, Casey. We'll be seeing you soon, Janie, darling. But wait a minute, Jimmy. Listen, I must talk to you. I must. Yes, all right, sweetie. Yes, cheerio. Jimmy! <laughs> How do you feel, Grandma? I shall never be the same shape again. Well, that might be a good thing. Dad, tell Grandma not to drink too much. What? Tell Grandma not to drink too much tea. Well, why not? Well, you know what happened in the shadow bank. Well, yeah, hey, Grandma, go easy on the tea. You know what happened when we went to Clacton? I didn't say shout it. Won't be long now, Grandma. Oh, I think I can see the horse guards coming. I can't see a thing. <gasps> that pear you gave me is stuck. It's right here in the pit. Oh, will you ask for it, Grandma? Yes, but you didn't order to give it to me. You know how they punish me. Oh, well, put your waste some money on it then. Yes, it is. Oh, you may come do, look. Oh, it's been lovely. It's no use. Ooh. My pear won't settle. I shall have to get out. You can't get out now, Grandma. Oh. Don't be silly. I'll tell you, I've got to. Oh, I shall have to go with her. Oh, you can't. Well, I've got to. Oh, I told you not to bring her. Poor old son, I couldn't leave her at home. Excuse me, let me get past me. Well, you come back, you'll get lost. Mm. Come on, Pet. Daddy, I can't, we're just coming. Shut up, come oh. on. Fancy old treating a poor kid like that. Yeah, do you mind your own business? Yeah, yeah, who do you think you're talking to? I can do what I like with my own child, can't I? Come on. That's right, I'll be on a kid. Child Joe. I was not shouting. How do you feel now, Grandma? Better. All right. Come on, we don't want to miss it all. Well, aren't you going to ask them if they let us through? We'll never get through there. Call yourself a man, we will if you ask them. Oh, all right. Excuse me, sir, I'm sorry to worry you. Come on, love, I've got my little girl here. Oh. Pardon me, just get in back up the front. Excuse me. Just a minute, sir, won't take long. Uh, we'll just get in through now here. Pardon me. Just a minute, old man. Sorry. Well, what do you want? Oh, I'm sorry to disturb you, chum. I'm just getting back to our places. What do you mean, your place? You get back where you belong. Well, that is where we belong. Don't talk silly. You get back and take your turn, like everyone else. Some of us have been here three hours. We've been here since last night. That's a likely story. And you're another. Get on, Joe. Don't dawdle. You calling me a liar? Suppose I am. You want to make something of it? Now, listen, chum. I'm just about fed up Ooh. with this. And so am I. Oh. What happened? 
and Mum. Father had a bit of an argument. It was all Grandma's fault. Where is Grandma? Gone out. Good riddance. That's enough. She can't help being old. It's time she could. She's had enough practice. What are you looking at? Nothing. Oh, Dad, your face does look awful. You think so? You ought to see his. You're back. Oh, good. Well, tell us about it. You didn't see it. What do you mean, we didn't see it? You didn't see anything. Not one single solitary thing. <laughs> Never mind, ducks. <laughs> see it all on the picture. <laughs> no. Oh, morning, Huggies. Morning, sir. Hello, what's the matter with your eye? Oh, it's just a bruise, sir. I banged up against the bathroom door in the dark. Oh, bad luck. <laughs> you can't get a good beef steak to put on a black eye nowadays, either. No, if I could get a steak, I wouldn't waste it on a black eye, sir. <laughs> I suppose not. Look, have those new wrappings arrived yet? Uh, no, not yet, sir. Well, why not? They guaranteed delivery within four days. When were they ordered? Uh, last Monday, I think it was, sir. You're sure the order went in? Positive. I was only wondering. I seem to remember you weren't very keen on buying them. Well, that wouldn't stop me carrying out your orders, sir. Oh, I'm glad to get it. All right. Well, you better get on to them and ginger them up. If they haven't had delivery within 48 hours, let me know and I'll speak to John Digby personally. Very good, sir. Oh, you enjoy the royal wedding? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, I'm glad you went. A sight like that, something to remember all your life. Is it? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And what do you think you're doing? Plucking me eyebrows. Pity you can't let nature take its course. Have you got a note of the exact date you ordered those new wrappings from Digby and Church? What new wrappings? I left a note on your desk last Monday. I didn't get any note. Oh, yes, you did, my girl. I left it on your desk on Monday. Oh, that must have been the one I spilt my nail varnish over. Did the order go or didn't it? Well, how could it when I couldn't read it? You little fool. Be Digby and Church and hurry. Another time, ask me. Don't just ignore it. Digby and Church, Campbell's here. About those new wrappings. We'll take five hundred if you can deliver by next Wednesday. What? But you can't have sold right out. Yes, I know it was a cheap line. Well, can you let us have a hundred weight to be going on with? Oh, I see. Well, when are you expecting the next batch in? Oh. Oh. All right. Thank you very much. That's torn. It couldn't proper. Why the devil can't you look after your work instead of dulling his up all day long? I keep telling you, she'll lose me my job, cost the firm hundreds of pounds, and all you can say is I promised me cousin Edie. Well, I did, Joe. I promised her faithfully I'd look after the girl till she came out of hospital. But I tell you, she's driving me balmy. I'm sorry straight I am, but what can I do? Send her packing tonight. I can't do that, and you shouldn't ask me. Well, I do ask you. Either she goes or I do. And you shouldn't say things like that, even if you don't mean them. But I do mean them. You've never spoken to me like that since we were married. I've never felt like this since we were married. Now, you do as I say. I won't do it. I won't. Well, we'll see about that. I'll give you half an hour to make up your mind. Where are you going? Where do you think? The week, Chief. Oh, no, Joe. Not again. Yes, again. Out of my way. Oh, Mum, don't cry. I'm not crying. It's all over that woman, isn't it? What woman? Diana and him. No, of course it isn't. Come on, you can tell me. I'm old enough to understand. Oh, well, yes, it is in a way. You must do something about it. Can't do anything about it. Well, I can. Now, look here. There's enough trouble already. You keep out of it. You mustn't interfere. All right. But I want you to know that whatever happens, you can depend on me. I'll stand by you. I oh, know you will, ducks. Now go along and do your homework. Oh, Mum. Jane? Yes? Someone to see you. All right. They're quite right. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have come here. I went to the library today. 
And they tell me that you've left to get married. Well? Are you really going to marry this... this stranger? Jimmy isn't a stranger. I've known him since I was six. Do you know him as well as you know me? Yes. Do you? Do you know what he's really like? Can you see his face as clearly as you can see mine? No, but... Well, there you are, then. It won't do, Jane. It just won't do at all. Well, uh, Harold, he's coming home on Friday. And we're going to be married on Saturday. And, well, he's got the license and everything. And well, I just can't let him down now. You must. You've no right to go tying yourself up to somebody you hardly know. Besides, that isn't all. I don't suppose... I don't suppose you've thought about me. What about you? Don't you realize that I... I love you? No, I... I knew you'd like to talk to me, but... That's all. Give him up, Jane. Give him up. And let me love you as you deserve. Harold, do you mean... Do you mean you want to marry me? I, I didn't say anything about marriage. No. A matter of fact, it's rather funny you mention that, because I don't approve of marriage. What do you want, then? Don't you see? For two people like us, intelligent people, people who have the ability to read and think and plan their lives in a civilized way, that, that marriage is just a, a, an archaic survival of a past age. Archaic survival. I'm not selfish like this Jimmy of yours. I don't want to whisk you off to the middle of some desert on the other side of the earth, away from all the comforts of civilization, and bind you hand and foot. I don't want that. I just want to make you happy. What do you say? Oh, Harold, I, I'll have to think it over. Well? Oh, Harold. I'm in such a muddle. Oh, I wish you'd stop pestering me so I could finish this and get home. I've done my best. I don't believe you've really tried. Well, you've hardly been out with her at all. It's no good. She's not my cup of tea. Perhaps I'm not hers. Whatever it is, she won't play. Oh, but you've got to do it. Don't you realize the fate of the whole Huggett family depends on you? I don't see why I should. He's not my father. Look, if Mum and Dad break up, what's going to happen to Jane and me and Susan? You are fond of Susan, aren't you? Of course I am. Well, then get cracking. I don't see why, just because I'm fond of Susan, I have to make love to someone else. Because it'll make Susan jealous, of course. And it'll save the Huggets from the divorce court. Oh, right. Oh, good. But I don't guarantee anything. You can do it if you try. Only be more masculine this time. Bend her to your will. Bend her which way? Oh, it doesn't matter which way. You just bend her. I'll probably end up by breaking her neck. You know, that's a very good idea. All right. All right. Am I forgiven? Oh, I suppose so. But I don't like people letting me down. Well, I wouldn't have done if it hadn't been for Gowan. Okay, forget it. Well, how about coming up with me this week? How about it? We'll have a night in town, shall we? See a film, a dance or something. I'm booked every night except Friday. All right. Friday. Now, where should it be? Do you know Spivarty's in Tottenham Court Road? No. No. I'll try anything once. I'll try most things twice. It's nicer. Down the hatch. Oh. Two more, please. Gosh, you've been angry. Well, so would you have been, my girl, if you'd have had as many cues to stand in as I have. So they let me come with you? Oh, no. Bad enough shopping without having you to worry over as well. Oh, you mean you don't want me to see what you got under the counter? Did you get anything extra? A little. What? Mr. Richards let me have a pot of sardines and a tin of shrimps. Well, they'll do for the sandwiches. There you are. What do you mean, there you are? I think it's immoral taking things under the counter. It's nothing more nor less than black market. Mm -hmm. I expect you'll have your share just the same. I won't. I won't touch one of them. You see. Oh, Pet, did the flowers come? No. Oh. Well, I rang up like you said, and they said it's Mr. Harris's funeral tomorrow, as well as Jane's wedding. We'd have to take our turn. Where is Jane? Oh, I forgot to tell you. She's locked herself in the bathroom again. She won't come out. Oh, 
dear. How long has she been in there? Two hours. I heard her crying about four o'clock, and when I went and spoke to her through the door, she wouldn't answer me. I'll go and talk to her. Jamie? Jamie! Now, look here, Jamie. You can't stay in there all day. You've got to come out at once. Do you hear? Jamie! Jamie! Oh, dear. What are you going to do, Mum? Ring up your father. Look, would you get the number for me? Yes, of course. Hello, Campbells? Could I speak to Mr. Huggett, please? Hello, Daddy. Mummy wants you. Joe, look, you'll have to come home at once. Jane has locked herself in the bathroom and she won't come out. Oh, I don't know. How long has she been in there? Two hours at least. Two hours at least? No, I, I've talked to her and she doesn't answer. Oh, but I'm frightened she might do herself an injury. Yes, all right. Yes, I'll come right away. Don't do anything silly till I get there. I've got to go home. Something's gone wrong. If Mr. Campbell asks for me, say I've gone out on business, will you? Okay. If you ask about the new wrappings, just keep mum and say nothing, see? Okay. Jenny, I want to talk to you. Open the door. I don't have to break it down, but I shall if you don't open it. You make up your mind which is to be. Look, are you sure he won't mind us having it? Of course not, stupid. Well, I think I'd better go and ask him myself. You can't. He's up at the wheat sheaf. And if you're suggesting I'm a liar, we might as well call the whole evening off. I'm not suggesting anything like that, but, well... I'll just pop in and have a word with Mrs. Huggett. You'll only get your head bitten off if you do. There's absolute chaos in there since she decided to get spliced tomorrow. Come on, let's get quick. Okay. You better pull it out. Yes. Oh, uh, what about petrol? Oh, I'll fix that. Palamon laid up his car. There you are. We'll fill up on the way. Okay. Good evening. Mr. Huggett at home? Yes. Who shall I say, please? Mr. Campbell. Oh, come in, Mr. Campbell, won't you, please? Thank you. Dad, Mr. Campbell's here. Oh. Good evening, sir. Come in, will you? Thank you. Well, this is a surprise, sir. It's a surprise to me too, Huggett. I wouldn't have believed it. Believe what, sir? You told me you'd sent off that order to Digby and Church last week. Well, you didn't, did you? Well, no, I, I didn't personally, Mr. Campbell, but you see, I gave the I order... I don't care who you gave it to, the fact remains they never got it. And now they've sold out of the new wrappings. I must hold you responsible, of course. I see, sir. In fact, after this, Huggett, I, I don't see how I can continue with you as foreman. I propose promoting Evans as from Monday. Yes, sir. You know we've got to step up production and cut costs, and we can't do it in face of carelessness of this sort. No, sir. You're a family man, so I don't want to dismiss you, especially as you've been with us so long. You can have your old job in the packing department back. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Very well. Good night, Huggett.
gracious, what are you doing here? I wanted to speak to you privately, Mr. Campbell. Oh, well, you did, did you? I heard everything just now, and I think you ought to know that it's not really all Daddy's fault. Indeed? Yes, you see, he's a good man, Mr. Campbell, really he is. Yes, I... Oh, you simply must believe that. If it weren't for this new temptation that's risen in his life, he'd be like he always was. New temptation? Yes, I'm afraid he's weak, but... Oh, there's no real harm in him, Mr. Campbell, really there isn't. Oh, don't condemn him for this one lapse. He hasn't been himself for days, you know. I've noticed a great change in him, haven't you? No, I can't say that I... Oh, don't push him further downhill, Mr. Campbell. I'm sure that if we're patient with him, we can get him through this difficult period. Well, I'm afraid his carelessness or obstinacy has cost the firm a lot of time and money. Well, would it put it right if I paid it back? I've got £3.17 in the post office, and if it's any more than that, you can have my sixpence a week. That's extremely generous of you, but no, I'm afraid it wouldn't be enough. However, I must say your father's got a very loyal daughter. And you can tell him from me, I hope in time he'll pull himself up and prove worthy of such loyalty. Good night. Good night, Mr. Campbell. I suppose you wouldn't consider giving him his job back again, sort of on trial? Not at present, no. I see. Good night. Good night. Hello, pet. Well? You are pet hugging, aren't you? Yes. But don't you remember me? I'm Jim. Jim! Oh, we got Jim Ben again here. You know me, always turn up like a bad penny. <laughs> well, where is she? Well, if she belonged to any other family, she'd be in an asylum. What do you mean? She always was neurotic. Now I think she's got splitsomania. Well, what's that, for goodness sake? You know, double personality. I think it's the life she's been leading. Oh, I see. Look, look after that. It's for Jane. Well, it's all right, isn't it? Lovely. Where's she now? Oh, she's locked herself in the bathroom. In the where? In the bathroom. None of our bedroom doors lock, so we always lock ourselves in there in our moments of stress. Oh, well, I'd better go and see her. She won't let you in, but don't take any notice. Freak, look if you have to. It'll be very awkward, but we'll have to put up with it. Jane! Jane, you lucky girl, it's what you've been waiting for. Jane, it's me, your little airman. Jane, get off the bar. Come on, open the door. Jane! I'm not going to wait much longer. Don't worry then, just when you feel bright and breezy. It's siesta time again. Seems as though this Latin manner must have come up here to stay. For my baby says manana. Just when everything's okay It's manana when I want to turn the lights down low And manana is the only thing she say It's manana and manana till it's time to go Won't it ever be today? It's manana every time I beg for one more kiss And manana is the only thing she say Must it always be manana at a time like this? Won't it ever be today? Look who's here. Hi, right, Gowan, what on earth are you doing this time? Well, I might ask you that, old man. Oh, I was just out with Miss Hopkins. Uh, Diana, nice work, if you can get it. Uh, this is Tony Gowan, Diana. My boss at the garage, you know. How do you do, Mr. Gowan? Uh, let's sit down, shall we? Is this your table? You know, I've got a feeling I've seen you before, somewhere. Have you? How very odd, so have I. Well, let's have a drink. Ah, oh, this isn't the stuff the doctor ordered at all, Peter. No, I don't like the look of that. Well, I feel like a nice gin and it. That stuff's got no kick in it. Garçon. Waiter. Oui, monsieur. Bring me a bottle of gin. Très bien. Well, how about it, Diana? I don't mind. Oh, you, you will excuse us, won't you, old man? There was nothing much to write about. I loved you all the time. And I had a tooth out. Look, this one, see? See? Too much chocolate. See, nothing ever really happened. You do understand, Jane, don't you? Jimmy. Yes, sweetie? Come here. Jimmy, darling, I'm, I'm sorry I've been so silly. It's just that I missed you so much, and I think it made me irritable. No, I don't believe that. Oh, yes, it did. It had 
most peculiar effect on me. I don't know what it was, but at times, just for no reason at all, I just felt like crying. Well, now, that, that's not a bit like me, is it? Oh, no, sweetheart. That's not a bit like you. Don't worry. We'll have a lot of fun after tomorrow, won't we? Will we, Jim? Mm -hmm. Supper, you two. Come and get it. You've got just half an hour before Mr. Fisher locks up. What do you mean, locks up? Well, you're sleeping there tonight. Mr. Fisher's got one of his moods on. He says if you're not in by ten, the door will be locked, and it's half past nine now, so you'd better step on it. Hop it. I shall give him a notice. That's what I'll do. Oh, no, Joe. Yes, I will. Can you see me back in the packing department with that twerp Evans as my foreman? Sleep on it, Dad. I don't think I shall ever sleep again. Well, I shall. I just can't worry about anything more tonight. I'm so tired the house could catch fire for all I care. Oh, answer it, Joe. What, me? Sure to be for you. <laughs> don't be daft. There's never been a call for me on that phone yet. Oh, I'll tell him right away. Dad! Dad! Oh, Dad, there's a fire at Campbell's. You've got to go there right away. Fire? At the factory? Yes, oh, hurry. Open the garage, Sue, will you? Yes. Oh, dear, I never should have said it. Said what? About the place catching fire. It's a judgment. Oh, you're nuts. Dad, the car's not here. It's gone. How can it be gone? Well, oh, look for yourself. Well, it must be somewhere. It is we're going to take me. Whoever's done this, I'll brain him. Look out, this'll do. Look out. Oh, Blimey, this isn't Campbell's. Campbell's? No, that's next door. What do I think I'm doing? Hey, Mr. Campbell. Hey, yeah, this isn't our factory at all. Oh, luckily. It was threatened at first, but I think they've got it under control now. Well, I wonder how it started. It seems to spread pretty quick. It started in the wrapping store. Apparently, they've just taken delivery of two tons of those new Digby and Church wrapping. Good job we didn't order any, sir. Uh, so I always thought they were a bit risky. Oh, you did, did you, sir? Well, of course. We made a very exhaustive test, Huggett. What well, have you forgotten? No, sir. I haven't forgotten, sir. Oh, Huggett. Yes, sir. Look, uh, about that job. I think we'll forget what I said and carry on as though nothing had happened, shall we? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I must go back. I've left my umbrella. You didn't have an umbrella, silly. Didn't I? No, of course not. Come on. Now we'll all get in front. I can sit on my knee. Well, what are you looking for now? My umbrella. You haven't got an umbrella. No. Oh, the door been done. Well, only up, Peter. Well, now what are you doing? I'm uh, sorry, old man. My umbrella appears to be in the way. That's not an umbrella. That's my leg. Oh. Now, look, you're not capable of driving. Let me have a bash. You get in the back. Yeah, really, I'm quite all right. I'm just a little sleepy. Well, you get in the back. Very well. If you insist. I do. Look out, darling. Let me get over there. That's it. Ah. Hold on to your axe, boys and girls. Here we go. Da 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 Oh. 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 Oh.
What do you think you're playing at? Hey, you're doing a good 60? No, oh, don't be so silly. You couldn't do 60 in a car like this? Oh, drive on. Don't take any notice of him. I wouldn't advise you to. Hmm. Well, it's a free country, isn't it? If I want to run into an island, I'll run into an island. I like running into islands. As a matter of fact, I'll go around the country running into islands. Oh, do you? Yes. Well, you better tell that to the magistrate in the morning. No doubt he'll be very interested. Who's that you've got in the back? Harper Marks, of course. Who do you think? Hmm. You ask me, you've been on the gin. I can smell your breath. You're a fine one to talk. I'd rather have gin than onions. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's up with him? He under the influence too? No, of course not. He's asleep. Oh, we'll soon see. Here, you, come on. Wake up. Oh, hello. Oh, are you a policeman? Yes, I am. Oh, good. This is, I want you. Well, I've lost an umbrella. Yeah. What's you? Sorry I had to wake you up, Jim, but Peter's just been on the phone. Who? Peter? Yes, he's in the most awful trouble. He's gone and crashed Dad's car. Now they've locked him up in Savile Row with Diana. Oh. He's the best man. Yes. We'll have to go and bail him out. But I won't have time now. Yes, you will if you hurry. There's a workman's at seven o'clock. You'll have to catch that. All right. But you'll have to explain to him if I'm late back. Don't worry. Leave everything to me. Joe! Hello, what is it? You must come. Oh. Jim's disappeared. What? Gone off without saying a word. What on earth are we going to do now? Well, didn't he leave a note? Not a vestige. Not a what? Not a vestige. Not a single one. Mum, need I wear stockings under this dress? Why, of course you must. Whatever next. Oh, but the suspenders will show through in lumps and I'll look awful. Now, look here, my girl. We've got far more serious things to worry about than your suspenders, so turn it up, will you? Why, what's happened? Jim Scarford. What? Oh, poor Jane. Oh, she'll have a fit. <laughs> well, if you ask me, it's like a lot of them. Church shy. Oh, Dad, what are we going to do? I don't... Oh! Excuse me. Hello? Yes. Oh, yes, Mrs. Hawtrey. Uh, no, it, it's quite all right, Mrs. Hawtrey, really. Peter should be back any minute now. Oh, yes, Mrs. Hawtrey, he had, he had quite a comfortable night up in town with Jim. Oh, didn't he tell you? Oh, that's all right, then. See you in church. Bye. What was that about Peter and Jim? Nothing. Don't give me that. You know something. Come on, out with it. Quickly, Jane's fainted. Dear. There, Betty, dear. I feel sick. Yes, of course you do. Here, have an aspirin. But what can have happened to him? I don't know, love. Oh, you've got to look on the bright side. He may have lost his memory or got knocked over or something. But I don't want to get married, Mother. No, dear, I don't expect you do. But you must try and get up, though, Jane. Do you suppose everybody feels like this on their wedding day? Yes, dear, everybody does. Come along. But did you want to marry Dad? Me? No, not when it came to the point. I nearly screamed the place down. It's time you got ready. I dare say Jim is feeling just the same. Jimmy? Do you mean he might be feeling that way about me? I expect so, dear. I know your Dad often told me he'd half a mind to do a bunk instead of coming to the church. Here, with my veil. <laughs> How are you? Uh, full of the time. Oh, what again? This weather clogs up my pipe. Never mind, we look after you. You go straight in. There's Auntie Amy and Betty and John. They're all inside. Come on, my dear. What do you mean, postponed? You mean he's run off and won't marry her? That's what you mean. Oh, of course not, Grandma. It's going to be at one o'clock. If he turns up. Hello, Grandma. Now sit down, everybody, and have a nice cup of tea. Well? Hello, Grandma. <laughs> there, there, my dear, don't you take on. 
not taking on. Marriage is a mixed blessing anyway. You'll be much happier as a spinster, you mark my words. <laughs> Janie! Janie! Let her go. You've got plenty to do here, love. Do we am going to keep them all amused for two hours? When there's trouble around your way, just walk up and meet it face to face. Then put it in its proper place and stop walking backwards all the day. Very good, Beth. Very nice. Now, what about now is the hour? Oh, Daddy, I've been singing for ages. I'll be hoarse. Oh, just one more, dear. Why can't you sing some of the old ones? Then we could all join in. Yes. I can't stand this modern stuff. Ah, all sounds the same to me. Pet, here you are. Album of old favourites. Come on, we can all sing together. Not that one. It's too high. My old Dutch. I thought she was in hospital. She said they might let her out this weekend. Oh, dear, what am I going to tell her? Well, don't tell her anything if you can help it. But she's sure to ask. Oh, all right, love, go oh, fetch her in. All right, sit down, everybody. Edie, fancy seeing you. You ought to have let me know, Edie. Well, they only told me yesterday. And I wasn't sure whether I'd go home first or not. Oh, well, you'd better come and sit down. You must be tired. Oh, I am. I ache inside something chronic. What's all the crowd for? Oh, didn't I tell you? Oh, Janie's getting married today. Oh, good. I love a wedding. Well, where's Di? Oh, she's out. Isn't she invited to the wedding? Oh, well, of course she is. She'll be back directly. Jim's here, Mother. Oh, he's outside now. Is he? Jim, who's Jim? We're back. Well, it took you long enough. Thank heavens you're here at last. I'm going to buzz off and change. I won't be a tick. Well, I'd better go and get ready as well. Hey, just a minute. What's all this about my car? Well, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'm afraid we had a bit of an accident with it last night. So I hear. And who gave you permission to drive it anyway? Why, you, Mr. Huggy. Oh, no, I didn't. Yes, but Diana said you told her she could use it. Oh, she did, did she? You wait till I get my hands on that young woman. What is all this about, Di? Where is she? She's got seven days. So has gone. Seven days what? Seven days in prison. Prison? You better tell us what happened. Well, she was a bit tight and slapped the policeman's face, you see, and used insulting language. How dare you? How dare you say that about my Di? She's a respectable girl. At least she was until she came here. What have you done to her? We haven't done well, anything. It's no good you playing the innocent with me, Joe Agate. You're at the bottom of this, as sure as my name's Edie Hopkins. You never did like my Di. Oh, turn it up, Edie. I won't turn it up. You're a two-faced sheep in wolf's clothing. That's what you are. Shh. She dish. I won't shush. You've ruined her, that's what you've done. But you wait, just you wait. I'll summon you, the whole lot of you. Where is she? Savile Row. Out of my way. Insulting language. She never knew any till she came here. Ah, good riddance anyway. I'll never hear the last of this. You mean I won't? I hate to remind you, but the wedding's in half an hour. I knew there was something. You shouldn't be here at all. Oh. Jane! What are you? I, Jane. I, Jane. Take thee, James. Take thee, James. To my wedded husband. To my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love, cherish, and to obey. To love, cherish, and to obey. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And thereto I give thee my troth. And thereto I give thee my troth. The ring. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.